Hi, we're back again. We've finished the basic house style, which is the basic layout of the template, which included the logo, banner, background color, navigation bar footer, and we saved it. So now we're going to continue creating the template by creating the navigation bar. So you should be in Dreamweaver like I am right now. You're not creating anything new. What you are looking to do is edit the template. So your site container, make sure you have your site container here. And inside your site, you should, the, this is the site, and it contains everything to do with the site. You have your images in here. And hey presto, if you had saved the template properly, a template folder will be created. This arrow means there's something in it, so click it, and it shows you your, your web page template. Click on that template, double click it, and open it up. So this is how far we got the last time. We've got the World of Music logo, we've got the banner, we've got the, um, uh, what do you call this? We've got the, uh, the copyright, it's not showing on here, so let me quickly figure out what's going on there. Should be white, should be white. Click away, right, so it's showing now. Copyright symbol, and then we've got an area for the navigation bar. What we want to do in this session is to create a navigation bar. The navigation bar basically takes you to different pages or key pages on the website. So the key pages we are going to look to get to and from are the home page, the top 10 songs, the number one song, and contact. Every, uh, there may be other pages, but we can add those at the latest time. So what we're going to do right now is create the navigation bar. Um, right, what we need to do is, for this particular navigation bar, we are going to need to create some buttons. But let's just create the structure of where those buttons will go, and then in a, we'll go out, create the buttons, and then insert them. So to create the navigation bar for our particular case, we're going to insert another table into this area. So this is the navigation area. Click in it. Click on Insert. Click table. Now the navigation bar has four buttons, the home, number one song, top 10 song and contact. So we want four rows, so there, and only one column. Now you have to remember that the table width here is not gonna be a thousand, that's the entire website size. It should only be the width of that column. Now you remember that width of this column was defined by the width of the logo, and the width of the logo was 150. So we're gonna put a width in here of 150, ensure that it is pixels and not inches or percentage, leave the border and click OK. So what you'll see is you now have um, a series of a table inside this column, and it contains four rows. Now our buttons are going to be 150 by 50. So what you want to do is, when you click in this one and go down to the property inspector, you have a width and a height. Now you can do them individually, so I'll do the first one. Click in the cell, go down to the width. The width is going to be 150. The height is going to be 50. So all the buttons are going to be 50 by 150. And once you click away, you'll notice that has changed. So that's get, getting ready for the button that will go there. Now we can do these three by highlighting them. So all three are highlighted as you can see. And then they all have the same width, which is 150. And they all have the same height. So we can make that change in one go, 50. And press enter. And now it's ready for the four buttons. The navigation area is ready for the four buttons. So we've set it up ready. The next stage, so don't forget to save. Remember you're just simply saving. We saved the template before. It will remind you that there are no editable areas. We will come back to put editable areas, but for now that's fine. Click OK. So that's done. So if you minimize that and you go back into Photoshop, so just click on Photoshop and open it out. You can close anything that's on the screen. So if you have anything open, just close them so that they don't confuse you. If you want, and make sure anything you've done is saved. You want to open up a new canvas, file, new. Again, what we're going to do is the title of this is going to be BTN, which stands for button. This is going to be the home button. 
we're going to have a width of 150 pixels don't forget it's pixels a height of 50 don't forget it's pixels again and leave the rest the same and click OK so that's our general <coughs> our general canvas for the buttons. I'm going to zoom out so that I can see more details. That's Command++. plus plus. So it's a very simple button. We're going to click the text tool. I'm going to still use the same font I used before. Um, I'm going to have to reduce this because it's, it's smaller. So let's try 24. Click here. So the first button is the home button. H-O-M-E. That's the home button. Um, you know that if you move away, and once the cursor becomes an arrow, black arrow head, you can move it. So I'm going to move it to come in a bit. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah, don't worry that it's a bit fuzzy. Remember the resolution is small, and the image itself is small, and I've zoomed it out, so it looks fuzzy. The edges look fuzzy. That looks about right, but I think I should take it down a size or two just to make it sit more comfortably. I'm going to take it down to 22. So I'm going to take this down to 22 and see what happens. That looks a bit better. And then click off. And what I want to do is move it slightly up. That's fine. Right, so that's the work. The text has been done. Don't forget to push that through. You could do all sorts of funky things, but we're keeping this one simple. So that's done. Now all I want to do is create a background. So I'm going to add a new layer for the background. Um, I'm going to rename this um, TXT uh, BK GRD TXT, the background for the text. Press enter. Now, in the background, I'm going to select the shape tool, the rectangular shape tool. I'm just going to create a shape that's more or less the same size as that. The background is going to be black, so yes, just select black, that's fine. Close the property inspector and then I'm going to move the background down so that the button can show. Now I can lock the background but position wise so it doesn't move. I might as well lock this one too so that it doesn't move. So that's that. Can't be edited and it doesn't move. So it's ready. I'm keeping it simple. No fandango. That's my first button. File. Save. Button PSD, Images folder, fine, click Save. Make sure Maximize Compatibility is on, click OK, and then File, Export, Export as a JPEG or P Big PNG. I was lazy, I was going to do JPEG, 15050, Export All. So that's the first button. Done. I would advise you to export as you do it. It gets complicated when you have to now go back and export. So every button that we're doing, we need to have two. Mm, we're good because we're going to create create a rollover effect. A rollover effect is when the mouse moves onto the button, it's going to change and look slightly different. So mine are going to go, I think I'm going to change the background. So I'm going to change the background to a grey this time. Mm, yes, a grey. So what I'm going to do here is on this second button, I've saved it already, so I'm now going to File and Save As. I'm going to save it first as a new button. So it's still Button Home, but this is the second of the two buttons. Images and Save. So I've saved it already. Maximum compatibility, make sure it's checked, and click OK. So all I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to change the background color. So to change the background color, I just need to click on the background layer. Go into the properties, which is here. No, sorry, here. No, where's my properties? Oh, unlock it because I locked it. That's why it's doing that. Unlock it. Go into properties. Yeah, where's my properties? Color swatch history. Okay, I am okay. Let me also unlock that because it seems to be causing problems. Right, so. Go into the color. The color I'm looking at for this one is now I'm going to change the color. It's not the foreground, sorry. This is the one. Ooh, I'm on the wrong layer. Right, make sure I'm in the background text. 
click on properties okay now it's appearing be careful when you lock it it does all sorts of funny things so in the background for the second effect I want it to be slightly gray so I'm looking for a slightly gray effect it's a bit ooh, it might want to be darker than that yeah I think I want it to go slightly gray so when you mouse over it's just gonna change slightly close the properties and click file and save remember I saved it before so that's two buttons if I open the other one you'll see the difference is slight so let me open recent that's the second button where's the first button there's oh no no where's the first button okay I might have to go into open images that's the first button so let me open that up just so that you can see there's a slight difference zoom out plus 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 so my first button will look like that but when it mouse over it will look like that so what I now want to do with these buttons is to create all four, um, another all four buttons to two each. So I'm going to use this one. I'll click File and Save As. So the second button is the number one song. So this is going to be number one, number one. That's the first button of the number one song. Save it. Make sure I've got maximum compatibility. Click OK. And then all I'm going to do is click the text tool and then come on here, highlight the words, I'm going to change the words, so all I'm going to do here is type number one, song. Now it's a bit big, so I'm going to have to either move it or transform it, so I'll try moving it first and see if that will solve the problem. Yep, it does, so the number one song sits in there nicely, so all I want to do with that is file and save it to update it, and then I want to simply file and save as. I'm saving it as the no, um, button number one. This is the second version, dash two. The second version of the button number one song. Save that. Make sure maximum compatibility. Click OK. And then all I want to do on this one is to change the background layer. So what I need to do here is click the background layer. Make sure it's not locked. Remove the locking the background layer come to the properties that's correct and again I want that dark dark gray that one is it that one no it's that one always remember so it's, it's that one right once you've done that close the property inspector and make sure you save it save it as button number one two so I've got my two buttons for the number one for the um number one song so I need to create two more buttons for the top 10. So again, I come back into here, edit, um, file, save as. I'm saving it before so that it doesn't mess up the previous button. This now is button top 10. So I'm going to delete that and put top 10. I'm going to remove the dash. Um, I'm going to, okay, I'm doing the second button first because it's already there. So dash two, so this is the second button first. Make sure it's in images, save. Make sure maximum compatibility is on and click OK. Select the text tool, highlight the text, and simply change the text to top, top 10. So that's top 10. Again, let me move it into the center. Just to make sure, let's make sure it's nice and centered. And this is the second button, so it's okay that it's gray. And then all I need to do here is save. Now, to create the first button, the only difference with the first button is the background. So again, go in, file, save as. This says top button, top 10. I'm going to remove the, the dash 2 because this is the first version of the, the first button. Make sure it's in images. Click Save, make sure maximum compatibility is checked, click OK. So what I need to do with this one, click the Select tool, is just change the background. So come to Background, make sure it's selected, click the Property Inspector, Background for the first button of the top 10 should be black, click here, click back, and we've got the first button. Close the property inspector and make sure you update the file by clicking file and save and save. So that's now that's now the third button. So the last button I need to do is the contact. 
as button. So go to File, Save As. This time I'm changing this top 10 to Contact. C-O-N-T-A-C-T. -E Make sure it's saving images. Make sure, and then click Save. Make sure maximum compatibility is checked and click OK. So next thing, select the text tool, highlight the text. This time we're typing contact for this button. It's not quite sitting well, so move it so that it's sitting in the center. Once it's in the center and you're happy with it, click tick. And then click update the file by clicking file and save bearing in mind you've saved it already. Once you're happy with that, create the second button, go to File, Save As. It's still the contact button, but it's the second one of the two contact buttons. Click Save. Make sure maximum compatibility is on and click OK. All I need to do now is to select the Select Tool, select the background layer here, select Properties, make sure the color is correct which is this one, close the property inspector, click file and save to update the file, and that's all your buttons done. Now, I've made one slight mistake. After making each button, I did not export it, so I'm going to have to go back and export each button. So, what I'm going to do is go to file and open. Let's open all of them. They're all here. So I think I'll open all of them. So all that, that one is okay. That one is not so okay. Right, so PSD, okay, so all the ones that are PSD, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to open them one by one. That one, okay. That one, nope, okay. So what I'm gonna have to do, okay, no, it's wrong button. That one, that one, uh, contact yup 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 so all of these are going to open and have to export them okay so home i did home i think right i don't, I don't know if, hold on one second let's see if we can do that command, command. okay so what i'm gonna have to do is export them one by one so file export export as and just go through and export them one by one make sure they're JPEG make sure the size is right export all and then make sure the name is right and it's exporting to the right place once you've exported my suggestion is try and make sure it's saved because that one has a star by it and then close it next one file export export as doing it the long way helps you remember it so i'm gonna ask you all to just make sure jpeg 150 now this one is slightly smaller make sure it's 50 that's what it's supposed to be 150 by 50 and export all make sure it's exporting to the right place with the right name export then make sure you save it just in case you've made any changes which i did and then close it next one file export export as again it's make sure everything is okay and export all right location export so you can quickly run through all of that just to ensure you saved it and close it uh, next one file export export as and you go through that whole process that you export all the buttons I'll do it quickly um, export all export again and again file save and just make sure you close it it's a very quick process but I was just trying to take you through it all so that you have it down and then export all export file save and close it just two more to go and we're done file now You've got to do this in order to be able to use them. So as laborious as, so that's why I said it's better to do it as you make the buttons. If you do it this way, it's just stressful and it can be somewhat trying. But hopefully you won't make the same mistake I did. You'll, you'll be more sensible. 
So all your buttons done. This is the last one. Yeah. Um, and export all. Export and just save it. Right. So all of that's done. So all your buttons are done. So you can now return to Dreamweaver. Right, now Dreamweaver, the places are ready for each of the buttons. Now remember, I did say these buttons are rollover buttons. So what you want to do here is we're now going to create a rollover. We're going to insert rollover buttons. So click in the first one. Um, hopefully, just check that your image, you might have to refresh this. Click the images down right, so you should see all your buttons there. Yep, they're looking pretty. And also, if you go into Assets, let's just stretch this up a bit. Um, your assets should also show your images. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It might take a little bit of time. Yep, there they are. So all your images are showing in your assets. So that helps, and as you click on it, shows you each of the different ones. They're just slightly different, but hopefully, when we get them on, you'll see the difference. So click in the first one, go to Insert, and you're going to go into um, HTML. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a, a rollover. So click Rollover Image. So the image name, this is the first button, so we can just call this Home. And the original image for Home, you browse for. Now what you're looking for is the first of the two home ones, which, and it has to be the JPEG, not the PSD. So that's the first one when it's black, and you click open. So now it wants to know what image is it for the rollover, and that was the second of the two images we did, which is slightly grey. And again, make sure it's the JPEG you choose, not the PSD. There, doesn't look different, but let's hope it works. Click open. Um, you could put an alternative text, which is just saying home button. And when you click, we'll leave that blank for now because we haven't created any of the other pages. And all you need to do is click OK. Now let's save this file, save the template, and it's going to give you a reminder about no editable areas. Just click OK. Now what we want to do is have a look at what this looks like and see if it works. So we're going to preview in the browser by clicking this button here. The template is reminding you again about the editable regions, but it's going to show you your template. That's what it's looking like. Okay, not bad. Now let's see if it's working. Now you see, as the mouse goes over, there you go, the mouse goes over, you've got your rollover effect. So it's working. Good. So minimize that and continue inserting the buttons. Click in the second one. Again, you want to go to Insert, HTML. Go down to rollover image. This one is for number one, number one song. Click browse. Look for your buttons for the number one song. So that's the, and make sure it's the JPEG. You want the first one, click open. And then for the rollover image, you want the second one. Make sure it's the JPEG again, can't repeat that enough. And then you can put here number one song button and then no URL for now and click OK. So then click in the next one and do, repeat the same method. Insert HTML and what you're going to do is the rollover effect. This button is the top top 10 songs. Again the original image is going to be the first of your two buttons for the top 10 songs so it's going to be that one. Make sure it's the JPEG, click open the rollover button, which is the second of the two images that you made. Click it, make sure it's a JPEG, click open. You just put in an alternative term, top 10 songs button. And then no URL and click OK. So you've got your one, two, three, just the last button. Again, insert HTML5 and rollover image. This one is the contact us button. And then in here, you want the first image of your contact buttons. So look for the first one, make sure it's the JPEG, click open. And the rollover one, which is the second one, BT Cut JPEG, make sure it's JPEG, and click open. Um, again, you want to put contact us button. This helps people who can't, who may not be able to see clearly or who are blind and their reader is going through the system, it will be able to read it and tell them what it is. No URL and click OK. So 
So there you have your buttons. All inserted, all looking good. Just save it. Don't forget to save the template. It will remind you that there are no editable regions. No problem. Click OK. And then view it. Click here and view it in Safari. Again, it will remind you no editable areas. Just click OK. And then have a look at it. So far, it's looking good. Again, it's working. Just move your mouse over and see if the effect comes up. It comes up nicely. Okay, nicely there, nicely there, nicely there. So we've got the site. With that, that concludes the navigation buttons. Now, the navigation buttons don't work yet because we haven't created the other pages to link to, but they're in place, and the template is now almost complete. Almost complete. So make sure you save it, and that ends the session for now. Next, we're going to be... Next, we're going to be um, creating the editable area and then linking it to the pages. So the next stage is oh, to complete the navigation um, bar, we need to create other pages to link to. So that will be our next lesson. Try this out and hopefully we'll meet in the next session.